All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is, man. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily 2K content. One for the money, two for the case, three for all of my gym stars. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the barbershop, BK of the People's Champ, coming to you live with another video, man. Hey, listen, man, a lot of things to talk about, a little bit of time to get to it in, but for the people, there's a lot of people that watch the show that act like they don't, and, and you know, they, you know, it, it, they know about some snacks. So here we go. M&M's or Reese's Cups. I mean, Reese's Pieces. Damn it, I say M&M's or Reese's Pieces. Which one is your favorite snack, man? That's what we need to know. I'm going to tell you real quick. I like the M&M's. I suppose now we, it's really a moot point because we do have the peanut butter M&M's. But the peanut butter M&M's, they're just not the same as Reese's Pieces. Reese's Pieces are a little bit sweeter, uh, uh, you know, in my opinion. Um, But... Nothing beat a good Reese's Cup. And we'll probably do Reese's Cup tomorrow because, hey, all my folks love Reese's Cups, man. But look, I'm going to go with M&M's on this one just because I'm an M&M's guy. Um, and now they got all the different flavors of M&M's, but I like plain M&M's, really. Maybe I should have done plain versus peanut M&M's. Maybe that would have been a, you know what, that, that, that would have been... That would have been a better battle. But I like I like plain and peanut M&M's. Maybe we'll do plain and peanut M&M's tomorrow. If you want to put plain M&M's or peanut M&M's down there, let me know if you want to do those against each other. But M&M's are Reese's Pieces. That's what we got. First story, man. Check this out. Hey, my boy Demetri Jones called me Meech. Big Meech. He says, hey, my, he said, my boy just seen this on 2K. How in the absolute hell... Do you discount higher than normal prices? And so if you see, they got the shorts, man. It just says the just just done NBA final shorts. They are now 13,000. They were 10,000. Slashing. Slashing prices all over the internet. NBA 2K. That's what we do, baby. Slashing prices all over the internet. Hey, look, we got all of this stuff. This is all the finals gear. And it's discounted at a plus. What's that? A plus uh, a plus 33% rate? A plus 35% rate? That's what it is. So they discounted it plus 35. So maybe they meant to take 35% off, but they literally added 35%. Is This almost reminds me of like the Black Friday sale when they jacked the price up 50% the day before the sale and then they cut it by 25%. So really what you're paying is about a 35% increase. But to you, you think that you're, you know, you think that you're getting 25% off. But hey, but they didn't even try to hide it. The, somebody got their numbers mixed up, man. I don't, I don't know how this happens. But I don't know how much, how many things happen in NBA 2K20. It's just one of those things where it's just like, bro, come on, man. We got to do better, man. Come on. Can, can I get a do better down in the comments, man? We got to do better, man. We got to, like, it, it's one of them things where you sit here and you be like, bro, are we even trying at this point? How do you discount something and show that you jacked up the price? It's just like when we used to be, I used to work at Office Depot a long time ago, and it would be like, please take the ticket from behind the new ticket because you want to show that this is a lower price. We don't want them to see that we jacked the price up. And sometimes you have a sales associate that would leave the ticket behind there that would show what the price was. And then so when the person would pick it up and bring it to the front, they'll look at it, what the hell? It's the same, this price is higher than that price. But it's on sale. What the? So you know, it's it's like one of those things, man. You gotta you gotta get some better associates, man. But it is what it is. Hey, next up, NBA 2K18 servers down, down, down. Them servers going down. I said down, down, down. Them servers going down. NBA 2K18 servers to be discontinued on January 18th, 2020. Players will no longer be able to play ranked games online. Uh, an association. Wait, online association for more. Go to NBA2K.com server status. Hey, is what it is, man. We talked about this on the other day. Davis was uh he was going through it and he just said, hey, look, these servers can't possibly be going to stay up, are they? And I commented on why they might be staying up because all the neighborhoods could be linked, or because more importantly to me, or in my opinion, um, it could have been because those servers allow continued monetization of the game but once the population of the game drops below a certain level the continued monetization is a moot point so it's not something that, that that's feasible if it doesn't make them money it doesn't make sense we know that's how 2k operates and it just wouldn't make sense to keep these servers up because they're not going to make them any money so you know it is what it is and i don't even think anybody playing 2k 18 anyway if they are then kudos to them but uh 
you know it is what it is. Hey, up next, a, a challenge that 99% of the NBA 2K community will not be entering in. And this is a free hundred dollar, free buck fifty or a free hundred. Hey, this is free cash, man. But more importantly, it's free real estate. Hey, look here, man. Hey, Rico NBA 2K, my boy uh, Rico Fenice says, starting uh, starting tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the RB the RPW bench press challenge will begin. I want to see I want to see some of the best bench pressers in the 2K community. Got to be in the 2K community so we know the people that won't be in there. Um, but you know it is what it is. They can try. Uh, you know in the 2K community, a um, hundred dollars for the best 185 bench presser and uh, a buck fifty for the best 225 bench presser. I will make a video tomorrow going over form and details. Now listen here, man. It depends on what they're doing and all that good stuff, man. First of all, I think this is a dope ass um, icon here, avatar that my man got right here, man. I need to make him one of my t-shirts, man. He need to hop on one of these t-shirts, make gains, not excuses, because that's what we do around here. We make gains, not excuses. Hey, but look though, uh, I think that's, that's dope as hell though, that he's doing something like that, because we do need to do more things to promote fitness in the NBA 2K community. Like you just look at some of the, like, a lot of us sit around and play the game and play the game and play the game and just not in the best of shape, present present company included. I'm not in the best shape that I that I should be in. I'm not in the best shape that I want to be in, even though I'm ripped the freaking shreds and all that stuff, man. I'm just not in the best shape that I could be in and, and that I want to be in. And so I need to hit the gym even more. It's like with this challenge, uh, two or three months ago, I could have eaten this challenge alive at the 120, 185 or the 225 level, but now, I, I would probably, I probably can hit 185 for 15 reps uh, cold right now. After I warm up, I probably can hit it for 20 or something like that. But like he said, he got to go for him. Most of the time in these in these joints, people always try to get on me because I do the chest, the chest exercises. So I don't go all the way and lock out every time. I go from here and I use my chest. Once I get to like about here, I, I come back down. But I come back down with four. So it's like I... I I almost throw the weight off my chest and then I let it fall and then I catch it and throw it again. That puts more effort on, you know, a lot more on your chest uh, to do that. I don't use like, like my triceps and stuff. I work those individually. So this is going to be something good, man, because I want to see who's going to come out here, um, who's going to come out here and do this thing, man. I told my boy Jay Nell to come out here and do it. The human specimen Duke Dennis probably going to come out here and win it over everybody. So, you know, it is what it is. But, hey, it, hey, I would like to see that, man. I want to see some some of the bigger 2K people to do it, man. I don't want to see just, like, people just in the community. Because I know we got somebody random, like my guy Jay Nell, that come and eat this joint alive, man. You know what I'm saying? He can come eat this. He going to come eat this joint alive. And like I told him, I just tweeted to him, bro, this is free cash right here, my guy. Like, if y'all don't know who Jay Nell is, let me show y'all real quick, man. If y'all don't remember Jay Nell, uh, Jay Nell is this fellow right here. Now, he he's like, I think he's like, I don't know how tall he is. He's like 6'7 or something like that. Um, hold on. I, I don't know what's on his timeline, so I don't want to. I don't want to. Hey, we need to play, play Apex, bro. We got to play some Apex, man. We got to play some Apex, brother. But um, I'm trying to see if I can find... If I can find the uh, the joint that he sent me, man. He sent me this a long time ago. Uh, he he added me. And um, it really was, it was really one of the ones where where he 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 went to the rim and he dunked it. But my man is like you, you'll see it in a second. He's he's uh he's he is a human specimen. So I feel like he can eat this joint alive. I want him to come out and try to compete in this joint. Uh, and I cannot find it at the moment. Oh, here we go right here. Check this out. Y'all might y'all might remember him from this clip in the beginning. Like, look at this big dude. Ah! Look at him going to the rim. Look at he even hashtagged it. Gym stars going up. Right! So, yeah, I, I figure he can eat that alive. Tay Too Sick can probably eat it alive, too, because Tay Too Sick, he be in the gym like that also, man. So, you know it is what I mean, hey, we're going to see what happens. Look, up next, we have 
Um, I just got something to tell y'all real quick about the off-ball moves. I'm gonna be doing a video on the off-ball moves and how they've changed. 2K put in an update, and with the latest patch, the off-ball moves have been fixed. So it used to be like, you know, you would run, flick the right stick, right to left, and you'll just get caught in place, like this. And he wouldn't do nothing. So now when you're flicking the right stick, it's like he'll juke, and then you can go the other way, and you can release out of these moves immediately. You used to be able to do like the little half circle, quarter circle, and it would take you from one, one end of the court to the other, but he would just, you know, do the little spin and fake this way, spin out, and go to the other way and stuff like that, and that's cool. All of this stuff has been updated and upgraded so that, so that you can actually use these moves now. So what I'm gonna do is do a video later on explaining how to do these moves, how to use it, and how to use it with off ball, uh, slippery off ball as well. And we're gonna do it with my other guard and we're gonna see what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little series We're gonna do I'm gonna play with my other guard and we're gonna to try to see If we can um, we can actually make a difference uh, with this with slippery off ball is now worth it since since that uh, Since you have these this freedom of movement just wanted to touch on that real quick and last but not least So this morning I was perusing because I was getting ready to check out I was getting ready to check out the um the uh I was getting ready to check out the, uh, the, the 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 bench press joint, and I ran across my guy. It's Chaz, and so you know I followed him, checked him out, and stuff. And so he was talking about some things about you know we got to make an effort to 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 take to have 2K take out open this next year. It has to be done for the integrity of esports. And um, so I went down a rabbit hole, but then on his Twitter we also found that uh there's an article out here, and uh. It's this article right here by Harris Rubenstein. And uh, you know, we wanna we wanna touch on this real quick. I'm going to let him I'm gonna let him express himself really quickly, and then we are going to go from there. Bear with me one moment while we while we get the music stopped and we go over here and we allow Mr. Rubenstein to express himself. Here we go. I'm NBA 2K League insider Jeff Eisenband, and league sources tell me Wednesday night NBA 2K League players received an email from NBA 2K League. I'm sorry, Jeff Eisenband. Where I get Rubenstein from? Oh, Harris Rubenstein. Okay, bro. I know. I, I was like, I know. I, I know. I saw something. Anyway, let's get back to it. I'm NBA 2K League insider Jeff Eisenband, and league sources tell me Wednesday night NBA 2K League players received an email from NBA 2K League operations mapping out how archetypes will be determined for Season 3. They were given a survey that includes eight archetypes at each position, the same archetypes that were used in the Combine. Now... In at each of those positions, there is no pure lockdown defender, most notably at shooting guard and small forward. Speaking to players about this development, I received mixed reactions. The biggest concern on the player's end is that teams specifically retain players to play a pure lock position. Now, what happens with those teams and players? One point guard tells me this will help him move more freely on the court, while another point guard says this will narrow the difference between point guards. Having a pure lockdown defender in Season 2 force point guards to dig deeper into their arsenal to strive at a high level and, and of course bang. all five mvp finalists were point guards in season two one player did mention that while pure locks may be too overpowering a sharp lock could be a compromise encouraging the use of a shooting guard that can contain a point guard while providing respectable offense on the opposite end i spoke to a few lockdown defenders from season two most of whom are confused by the development but they would adjust accordingly to a different defensive minded build a few players told me they fear a certain two-word phrase that I won't say, but it starts with five and ends with out. The coaches and executives I talked to had a much different opinion. One coach felt the role of the lock in season two was too unrealistic when compared with IRL basketball. He told me his point guard is actually excited by this because said player wants to guard the opposing point guard himself. Meanwhile, a retained lockdown defender told me he thinks point guard on point guard play is overrated. Another coach told me the absence of a lock will allow teams to have a more unique defensive strategy, although he says he wants to see at least one defensive-minded archetype at each position so teams can determine what sort of defensive identity they'd like to have. I spoke to League Ops Associate Manager Brad Ross, who told me the email was meant to create a collaborative effort with players to help formulate Season 3 archetypes. He said the presence of locks or lack thereof for Season 3 is something the League is still currently exploring. The jury is still out on lockdown defenders, and we might not have a verdict for Season 3 for a couple of months. But right now, League sources indicate that there is a strong chance there will not be lockdown defenders in Season 3. What do you think about this? Drop your comments below.
Now, the thing is, I understand. I can see both sides of it. So I'm watching Chaz. I'm looking at Chaz's, um, you know, his whole deal about the whole thing. And I'm sitting here thinking, okay, knee-jerk reaction. Everybody's just got to elevate their game, right? But then you think about it. How much can you elevate your game? Now, even though I feel like, and these are the archetypes right here. We're going to go through those in a second. Even though I feel like that everybody does need to elevate their game, you have to really think about it and be realistic, right? It ain't but so much you can do defensively in this game. A pure lock is completely unrealistic. A player that was taking away half of the floor and making a point guard just, just be bad just because he was on the floor, that player does not exist. A player that can make you tired, can make you work for everything and make and make those windows where you shoot the ball, pass the ball, and take your rest and do those things, make those windows slimmer, that player does exist. These players are, are more, a lockdown defender will be more of a pest than anything, but a lockdown defender is not shutting down a player completely. Uh, now, uh, like you might see even like how Patrick Beverly, he played against um, James Harden the other day. He had James Harden boxed when he was on him, but when he wasn't on him, James Harden was killing everybody. And that's just how it was. That's how I saw that game. Y'all might've seen it differently. James Harden had a stupid number of points that game. He was getting busy. But most of that stuff came in the fourth quarter when Pat Beverly had them filed out. But hey, it is what it is. And he filed out on a stupid play too. But anyway, look here. Look here, like just looking at these, these joints. So they said that the same things, the same thing that you had in the uh, combine is gonna be the same thing you're gonna get here. So you got the slashing, the slasher, the scoring machine, the slashing playmaker, we're gonna talk about that in a second, the three-level score, the offensive threat, the two-way sharpshooter, these are the things you can have at the point. Uh, slashing playmaker, and yeah, you got slashing playmaker at 6'4", and then the two-way slashing playmaker. And you can't augment these builds at all. Then at the shooting guards, you got the slasher, the scoring machine, the slashing playmaker, the uh, two-way finisher, three-level score, the offensive threat, the two-way sharpshooter, and the two-way finisher. So you have two ways, but you don't have any pure defensive build, um, except for the what the two-way slashing playmaker, I guess. But even that's not a pure defensive build. It will be the two-way. Um, I guess the two-way finisher is it, but. It's just not a pure enough because let me tell you something right here, man. This bit, this boy right here, that's a bad boy right there. That slashing playmaker at 190, that's a bad boy right there. If y'all watch, watch my stream, y'all see T. Mizzle sit there and just straight ISO everybody to the point where nobody can contain him. And he's not a pro. So if you got pros, now one conventional wisdom would say, well, it's pros on pros, so pros should be able to stop pros. But like I always say at the highest level, and this is something that they were saying back in the back and forth in the tweets, we know that people care about winning over the integrity of the game. So they're gonna do whatever it takes to win to make themselves look the best. Even my boy Coyote, he had sent me a message saying like, and, and this ties in, he was like, 2K sent him an email asking why the viewership for the 2K League dropped. And he was just like, I'm tired of seeing zones. I'm tired of seeing five out. I'm tired of seeing people just, just, you know, just really, just really it being the point guard in the center. And occasionally they'll kick it to the corner or something like that. Uh, you know, you want to see real basketball. We want to see real basketball. So, but the way that the game is designed, they can't really do that. Now they could enforce rules that make them play a certain way, but then that wouldn't be authentic gameplay. And every now and then somebody's gonna do like the guy did and use the left, right, left, right, push off and pull uh, when he scored 80 points in the first season. Now, even though it's, even though this could be good for scoring in the league, I really feel like the problem is gonna come in as, as like nobody wants to see that. We wanna see some exciting type of gameplay. And really, this is just an idea that I had off the top of my head that they can do to have this. If you have that slash and playmaker, and you have everybody ha having the ability to shoot and there's nobody that can really defend him and box that up. Um, not even one of the two ways can really do anything with it. Maybe with the 2K League settings, they'll be able to do something with it, but not even really two ways can really do anything with that guy. So what's going to happen is they're gonna run five out and they're gonna run uh, four, four out pick and roll, man. They're gonna run the five out pick and roll. So what, three out pick and roll? That's what they're going to do. And, and it's just gonna be unstoppable because if you go under the screen, he's gonna pull. If you commit to him, they're gonna give it to the center. If two people commit to the center, he's gonna go to the rim if you get hung on the screen. It's gonna be a bucket every single time. And that is going to be a problem because nobody's gonna wanna watch that. The only way they can really fix something like that, man, is some, this is something that I, I learned from playing basketball. It is incredibly difficult to guard someone and be expected to score all the points. 
I was on a lot of rec teams that expected that. I was on a lot, I've been on a lot of teams in my life that expected that of me. You can't play defense and guard the other team's best player and do it. What they should do is introduce, so this is just an idea. I don't know how feasible it is. Introduce something like a 40 second fatigue where if you, if you didn't score, if you have depleted your stamina bar to score like the last three or four buckets, you shouldn't have no stamina on offense. You see James Harden all the time, not all the time because he's a different type of animal, but after he didn't come and score, he's put effort forward to score the last two or three buckets. He normally gives that ball up on the fifth time to Westbrook or somebody like that. He don't bring it up because he can't do it. Now he does rest on offense. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie about that. So if you got somebody that can play the play the other team's point guard and um and and get that, hey, that's fine. But they need to introduce some type of fatigue over time. Like, look, you done taken this amount of shots. Shot, they can even call it shot fatigue. After you've taken a certain amount of shots in a, in a certain span of time, your, your fatigue should be so high, you, you shouldn't be able to do nothing for maybe 45 to 50 seconds. That will make the game more realistic, and that will make you go to somebody else every two or three possessions. Like I said, James Harden don't shoot the ball every possession. He just shoot the ball every... Okay, so James Harden shoots the ball every first, second, third possession, but the fourth time, he don't shoot it every every time. And the fifth time, he don't shoot it always either. But four, one, two, three, and four, uh, you know. All right, so James Harden shoot the damn ball every time, but y'all understand what I'm saying. Introduce something like, but well, he don't play defense either. So introduce something like a 40 second fatigue that's gonna take that point guard out of the out of the game for a player or two, and then force them, like even, he can even have some over his head, be like, okay, they point guard out of there for, for a couple of plays, so we need to try to score quick. But if you don't score quickly, if your team has to step up on defense and run them all the way down, then hey, that's half of it right there. Your next play clock, you good. So the next time you come back down, it's really gonna take you out of one one offensive possession. This is just something off the top of my head that I was thinking about, man. Just something like that, 40 second fatigue. Boom, he's on the 40 second fatigue, penalty. He can't, he can't really do anything. It's gonna make you trash on defense, make you trash on offense, but it's gonna make you watch your stamina. And that would be the most real thing because I know when I would go to the rim and exert myself too much, like you go up and lay, miss, board. Go up, lay, miss, board. That third time when I would go up, I might make the layup, but I'm doubled over. I can't do anything. But anyway, I didn't already talked too long, man. This video been too long for a weekend video. Y'all like the video. Let's get this thing up to 500 likes, man. And hey, M&M's, Reese's Cup, Reese's Pieces. Damn it, I say M&M's or Reese's Pieces. Y'all let me know down in the comments which one y'all like the best. Uh, y'all can also say peanut M&M's or plain M&M's. And I'm going to holler at y'all next time. Till next time. It's your boy Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK, the People's Champ. Got speed. I'm probably streaming on Twitch right now. After you watch this video, come watch me on Twitch. Follow me on all social media. And I'm going to holler at y'all. Hey, check out this video right here. Or this video right here, man. Because them joints fire too. We got to get my name out there. Also, I'm going to try to see if I can... Chaz has some really good insight on the league, bro. I, I want to see if I can try to interview him because I want to kind of be... I, a lot of the content is going to go the way of the 2K League so I can try to get, you know, affiliated with them in some kind of way or something like that. But I'm going to holler at y'all next time. Peace.